are going to be doing the funeral services for Jean P. Gibbs. Again, final gentle reminder, if you have a cell phone or a pager, please turn it off and Rabbi Shmuel Levin, Levin. <laughs> Levin will be officiating the services. Thank you everyone for coming from far and near. We're gathered to pay Hebrew what we call the Kavod HaAhro, the final respect and honor that's due to Jean Portis Gibbs, Chaya, Bas Baruch Vachana. Jean Gibbs was a beloved wife and a mother and a grandmother and a beloved great-grandmother she was a beloved friend to many, and as we begin, I uh, will recite a small chapter from Proverbs. Proverbs was written by King Solomon. However, this particular chapter is said to have been the eulogy that was delivered by our forefather Abraham for his wife, Sarah. Many people frequently will read it on Friday nights. Ashes Chayo Miyimsa, a gallant woman who can find. Far beyond pearls is her worth. Her husband's heartfelt trust is in her, and he shall lack for nothing. She bestows good upon him and never harm all the days of her life. She seeks out wool and linen, and her hands work willingly. She's like a merchant fleet bringing her sustenance from afar. She rises while it is yet night and gives provision to her household and direction to her maidens. She envisions a field and acquires it. From the full fruit, from the fruit of her hand, handiwork, she plants a vineyard. With vigor, she girds her loins and strengthens her arms. She discerns that her enterprise is good. Her lamp does not go out by night. Her hands she stretches out to the distaff, and her palms support the spindle. She spreads out her palm to the poor and extends her hands to the destitute. She fears not snow for her household, for her entire household is clothed with scarlet wool. Fine covers she made herself linen and purple wool for her clothing. Prominent in the gates is her husband as he sits with the elders of the land. She makes a cloak and sells it and deals a belt to the peddler. Strength and splendor are her arraignment. She cheerfully awaits the last day. Her mouth is opened with wisdom and the teaching of kindness is on her tongue. She oversees the ways of her household and partakes not of the bread of laziness. Her children arise and praise her, her husband, and he lauds her. Many daughters have accomplished well, but you, surpass them all. Grace is false, and beauty is vain. A woman in awe of God, she should be praised. Give her the fruits of her own hand, and let her deeds praise her in the gathering places. At this point, I would like to now call upon my Uncle David, David Gibbs, Jean's uncle, the son, to please share a few words of eulogy. Thank you, Samuel, Rabbi Samuel. And uh, I also want to welcome all the people who are watching us, uh, streaming from New York to many other places around. And also, uh, I think it's appropriate that it's a sad time, but we can all give thanks that uh, Walter, the father of the Lemons, and uh, our brother-in-law, a member of our family for 50 years, is doing much better. We thank, we're thankful for that. While my mother loved her friends, maintaining relationships for decades, and making new friends wherever she lived, and had many interests and activities reading, playing bridge, traveling, going to theater, concerts, cooking, eating, and uh, her work and community activities. Her passion 
and was her love and dedication to her family, to our father to whom she was married for 70 years, the three of us, Susan, who is taking care of Walter today, Bob and I, to our three spouses, Walter, Deirdre, and Ellen, her eight grandchildren, her nine great-grandchildren, her nieces and nephews, and innumerable cousins. She called her mother every day and never wanted to go to sleep on an argument. She said that choosing a partner in marriage was the most important decision in life, and she believed she made the right choice, and she was so excited by ours. First was Walter, who I mentioned has been a member of the family for 15 years, and a doctor on top of that. <laughs> Deirdre, Ellen, and in the next generation, Isaac, Tovia, Sarah, Annie, and Rachel's fiance, Nadav. Even when she could not travel, she was so happy to learn of events and activities, weddings, bar, bat mitzvahs, visits, trips, and the exciting events of growing up. She was the storyteller in our family. She told us about our father and his life and service in World War II, even though he rarely talked about himself. She talked about our grandfathers, my father's father, Harry, who helped so many people, paying for her late brother Bernie's education at Harvard, or signing financial guarantees for families coming to America to escape the Nazis, and stories about her father and uncles who were doctors, I think eight or nine doctors, and the first pediatrician in Chicago, and so much more. Since she was a storyteller, I would like to share two stories. First, in the late 70s, my mother became depressed, and she learned that depression had impacted others in her family. Her father, Bernard, who had passed away when she was still a girl, her sister Mary, and others. Receiving treatment herself was just the first step. She called a family meeting, and we met with her doctor, and without apology or embarrassment, she described the disease of depression, outlined the warning signs, and emphasized the importance of seeking help. Several years later, she and my dad decided to join, to join the congregation Beni Shobu, a temple that was especially welcoming to the deaf. They wanted Ariel and my brother's family to have a chance when they visited Chicago to be in a Jewish place of worship that was comfortable and welcoming. But this was only the first step for my mother again. She introduced her treasured niece, Beth, the daughter of Mary and Amel, to the temple. And that was not enough for her. She in, was instrumental in fixing up Beth and Myron. And 22 years later, Beth and Myron are still married and happy together. My mother did not talk about herself. She did not claim credit. She did not laud accomplishments. During recent years, she showed a great courage and resilience that even surprised her because it struck to the core of her family life. In 2019, our father was moved to a memory care facility due to dementia, and in 2020, he passed away. This was the first time since 1950, when they married, that she did not live with my father, and the first time in her life she had lived alone. She had, due to the circumstances of her father's death, she did not go away to camp, she did not travel, she didn't go away to college. She did get a BA from the University of Chicago. 
So at 21, she moved out of her father's, her mother's home, got married, and moved in with my father. When my father passed away, and for approximately two years during the pandemic, she had no family visiting. She was insistent no one should travel to dad's funeral or visit her and place their health in jeopardy. As I said, her family was the source of joy, and Bob began calling her every day, then Susan, and then I. We got her a portal so we could video conference her because she no longer used a computer. As travel became safer, she had visits from Bob, Susan and Walter, Eva and Isaac, Carol and Tuvia, Matthew and Annie, great-grandchildren, and earlier this month, Rachel visited and introduced her to her fiance, Nadal. All of this made her so happy. These contacts and what she learned of everyone's lives made her happy and she felt grateful. She sometimes worried at night and had trouble going to sleep. I often told her that she should not count sheep. She should count grandchildren and great-grandchildren. And she would laugh. She said, that sounds pretty good to me. You know, I am so lucky to have shared this life with Dad. We, her family and friends, are all the legacy she wanted she was happy and, and contented with that. Thanks. sum up my grandmother in two words it would be difficult but it would be obvious how wonderful those are the words that I heard her say over and over and over again how wonderful I call her up tell her a little bit about what's going on in my life Sammy, how wonderful. Everything her children and her grandchildren and her great-grandchildren did was always just wonderful. The truth is, whenever I called her, she would speak at length, singing the praises of her children, of my uncles, Uncle Dave and Uncle Bob, of my mother, of my aunts, father, then she'd go through all the grandchildren, what's doing with this one and this one, and everything, all the time. How wonderful, how wonderful. After Grammy's passing on Friday, I was speaking to my mother, and she made reference to the, the second chapter of Pirkei Ethics of Our Fathers, where the great sage, Rabbi Yochanan ben Zakkai, he, he asked his students, got them together, and he says, each of you tell me what do you think is the proper way in which a person should live their life? So his students each gave their own unique answer according to their personalities, all of which of them are enlightening. One of the first answers that's mentioned is the attribute of an ayin tova, a good eye. Now what does a good eye mean? The Rambam Maimonides, he teaches that a good eye means that a person lives with a sense of contentment and satisfaction with their own life. And thereby, says Maimonides, they're able to look upon other people and see just the good. The 
good in others, they see everything with positivity. My grandmother possessed in great abundance an eye in Toba, a very, very good eye. She saw good in her family and her friends and in the world. She saw the world with a lot of love. I was mentioning to my wife that as much time as I was very lucky to spend with her, both my brother and I, we got to spend a good amount of time with my grandparents when we were lived in school in Milwaukee. The perspective I always had of my grandmother was that of a grandmother. I saw her interact with friends and extended family, but she was just, for some reason, I was telling my wife, I just, I only see her as a, as a grandmother. And the thought occurred to me, when we were with our grandparents, they gave us 100% of their focus, their attention. Yes, they had many friends. Yes, they had a community they were a part of. But to us, when we were with them, they were just 100% grandparents. Today, it's a very, it's a very rare thing for a person to be 100% into anything. We get so distracted very easily. But for my grandparents, it was something that was very special. However, being that I only knew her and saw her from that perspective, it was especially moving for me to read a note my mother shared with me, one of her dearest friends wrote about her after hearing of her passing. Beautiful note. Grammy's friend describes her as really a completely, totally devoted and loyal friend. Someone that other people would count on for support in a difficult hour. She possessed a lot of insight into people. She always got things right but she always displayed patience and understanding with, with everyone. It's very funny, as I was reading that note, one of the other things on the list of Rabbi Yochanan ben Zake's students, Ethics of Her Fathers, is being a good friend, a chavar tov. The Mishnah says, a chavar tov, being a good friend is the way to have a good life. And it's no surprise because my grandmother she lived such a very good life. There's one other point I want to mention that really struck me for the first time, at least consciously it struck me on Friday. I was thinking about, about Grammy, and immediately my thoughts were of my grandfather. such a great team. And you can't really think about one of them without thinking about the other. When you spend time with Grammy and Grams, it wasn't you're spending time with Grammy and Grams. It was Grammy and Grams. They were like one super person. Their home was, was filled with so much love. My brother and I were talking, sharing memories special was to be, to spend an afternoon praying bridge with them, sitting around just talking. And when I look back on all those really beautiful memories, I think all we think about Gramps' 70th birthday for some reason is like, sticks out in my mind. A wonderful weekend. What's so clear about my grandmother is how much she loved grandfather. But she loved her husband. She held him in such high esteem. She felt so much respect for him. And of course, Gramps felt the same way about her. As a kid, it's not something that you might consciously take notice of. But as a younger adult now, it's really quite remarkable. And something I'm very grateful to have been able to be held. We're all gonna very deeply miss her. I'll miss hearing her voice call out how wonderful, fun, so much vigor and enthusiasm. Even two weeks ago, I called her just the vigor and the happiness that you hear in her voice. But I have no doubt that her pure, 
precious and holy soul will continue to be proud of all of us. I'm sure that it's all of our hope that we should be able to follow in her example, to strive to always see the world with that beautiful eye in Toba, that good eye that she had, to always be present when we're with the people who are most precious to us, and to be a good and loyal friend, a true Chavar Tov. May her memory always be a blessing. I have to, before saying the last prayer, my mother told me many, many times, many times, that I have to mention the incredible gratitude she feels to her brothers, uh, who took really outstanding care of my grandmother. They probably provided for her every need. No detail it was too small. Every effort was made to attend to whatever she needed, whatever would help her, whatever would make her happy. And uh, like I said, my mother feels a tremendous gratitude to David and Bob, and she requested that I express that on her behalf. At this point, we'll recite the, the prayer, Kelmole. <coughs> El Mole Rachamin, Shochei Ban Romim, Ham Seng Menucha Nechona Al Kanfe Ashkina, Bemalos Kedoshim Mutahorim, Gezoar Harakia Mazirim, Es Nishmas Chaya, Basbarach Vachana, Shaholcha La Oloma, Bavor Shanachim Spalin, Bad Haskaras Nishmasa, Baganeden Tehe Menucha, Lechain Bal Harachamin, Yasti Reha, Besaser Kinafav, Leolamin, Bitzror, Bitzror, Hachaimis, Nishmasa, Adonai, Hu Nachalasa, Vesanuach, Bishalom, Al Mishkava, Venomar, Amen. God, full of compassion, who dwells on high, grant proper repose on the sheltering wings of your presence, the lofty levels of the holy and pure who shine as the brightest, as the brightness of the firmament, firmament, unto the soul of Chaya, Bas. Daughter of Baruch and Chana, who has gone to her world and for whose memory we pray, may her repose be in paradise. May the master of compassion bring her under the cover of God's wings and bind her soul in the bond of life. May the Lord be her heritage and may she repose on her resting place in peace and let us respond. Amen. And this concludes the service here in the chapel. I'm just kind of looking out to see what the weather's looking like. I think we have a lull, so what we're going to encourage everyone to do is uh, we're going to go from here. We're going to ask everyone to make their way back to their vehicles, and then we'll follow the hearse to the graveside where we'll continue with the burial service. Um, if there are a few gentlemen that can also assist with helping us to bring the casket just a few steps out the door to the hearse, so we'll drive and I'll walk you back. Yeah, for a number of reasons.